Cheryl Desher, Associate Professor from Griffith University, our Queensland Thanks. partner in this project, delivering transit activated corridors. This uh, builds on the previous project we did together in Townsville, which was a lot of fun trying to work out what uh, you could do in a regional town to make it a better place and one that had good public transport as well as good walkable areas. And what is in this toolbox? Yeah, thanks, Peter. So, look, thinking back to the, the context of transit activated corridors, which was our previous experience uh, with, with Towns Hall as well, we are looking for ways to help our colleagues tackle the implementation of delivering transit activated corridors or tax. So, by putting the resources, whether they be reports or media articles or actually uh, tools in one place that people could find through some simple keyword searching, then we, we think that we've found a way that can improve accessibility for our colleagues. So you'll see on the slide that in translation literature and practice review uh, processes was a little different to what a, a normal academic would do when conducting a literature review. So we had a number of rounds of conversations with our SBE partners to talk through their own experiences is in innovation in delivering projects from a state government perspective and a private consortium perspective. And we came up with five categories or themes uh, to be able to categorize the types of helpful information that they were talking about. So planning, engagement and governance, assessment of the business case, procurement and delivery, and then maintenance and management. These are the kind of common language sets that you'll find in tender documentation, in project scoping, and just makes sense that we then organise information to make it uh, easily findable using the same categories. So you'll see here a table of those five overarching themes and then the 17 categories within those things. So you could argue, Peter, that we you know we love to organise. I think I love to organise. But putting things in easy places then makes it much easier to explore. So, for example, in the first theme of planning, you can see that we've looked at tools and resources around place and movement strategies separately to our what we've found around urban regeneration design packages. And then there's a whole world of health and well-being indicators. There was also quite a bit of really tangible information, useful information around electromobility, recharge hubs. So being able to package it up under categories that relate to the phase of the life of a project, in this case planning, super helpful. If we go down to assessment, of course, there's a, there's a huge world of infrastructure assessment systems. And perhaps if that's all you were looking for, maybe a Google search might be all you need. However, if you're in the land of transit activated corridors, then this is where you'll find information that's more suitable for that context. Stakeholder integration, corridor modeling under different uh, mode types, future uh, network modeling for transit options, and actually doing a full value benefit cost assessment, which people talk about. And, you know, it's always put out there as being a really good thing to do, but how is it done? What do people use? Uh, is another question altogether. The same then for procurement delivery, uh, engagement and governance, and then management and maintenance of your infrastructure, all the way through to monitoring and evaluation and, and what might be useful in the transit activated corridors context. So I, I think that's been a really useful exercise, Peter. We, we looked globally, and as you can see from the next slide, we actually came back home to Australia in finding that a lot of the useful information was homegrown here. So actually, we did, we did look to the USA as well, and uh, the UK has provided some really excellent examples. Our near neighbours in New Zealand and uh, over in Europe in Germany and, and then Sweden have, have got some very interesting examples of continental experiences in transit activated corridors. So you know, best best to be open eyes when you have a look at the resources that you're going to be using, I think, for our WA, Queensland and um, Southern Australia and Victoria and New South Wales, really helpful to know that um, probably the information you find here will be directly relevant to the Australian context. Hmm. Very good. And okay, so that shows us what is in there. How do you use it? Right. So once you're into the database, we've tried to keep it as flat as possible, Peter. I think we had a lot of brainstorming around how we could uh, use 
uh, a front, what we call a, a graphical user interface or a GUI to help the user get there. And we quickly came to the realization that the SBE is not a graphical user interface company. We're actually uh, an organization around getting the right information to the right people at the right time. So we've kept it really flat in that context. It may be in future that we actually grow our databases in SBE to all have a different kind of front face to find, uh, but literally it's as easy as a keyword search. And I think this video and the short report that goes along with the database resource uh, should be used almost as a table of contents to help people get into um, the examples and go for an explore. I would say, well, I have said to colleagues who are interested in transit activated corridors, park a couple of hours, grab a cup of coffee, think about the question that you're asking. Otherwise, just like in a Google search, you will be overwhelmed. So let's not go the overwhelm route. Think about what you're actually interested in doing for your project. And if it's actually across a number of those areas and you're looking to get a whole of project con context on, uh, on tax, on transit activated corridors, you might need a few sessions to actually go in and have a read. So appreciating that I think is really important. And then deep dive, go and have a read about some of the amazing examples that we've got in WA, in Queensland, in Victoria, about uh, Brisbane's experience with our Metro project. Uh, and then uh, more often than not inside the database is actually contact, contact names uh, and or at least role details for people who you can speak to to find out more about that experience directly. So we may not have been able to point to a specific document in the database, but where we haven't, we've got clear contact details to be able to get that directly. There's nothing so helpful as being able to use a template or extract from something that's been done somewhere else. And I think that's our key win in this project is that we've gone there more than I've ever seen before in, in putting those kinds of pieces of information in people's hands so they can get cracking. I think the last, uh, the second last slide uh, in the in the deck there, Peter, uh, just has a summary of what you can expect to find. Mostly reports and then academic articles. You know, academic articles. You when you look from an industry context, sometimes you can't actually ac access the article. So in this database, you'll have direct access to it, and then some actually really useful web pages. Some pages that we find on Google searches are um, pretty flat. The ones that we've selected for this database are information rich, so in HTML text. So we've, we've um, directed people there. There are about 20 user pay access areas. We have included them because it may be that that's still a reasonable uh, outcome for an agency that's looking for information that you're happy to pay, but your choice. And we've made sure that the, the majority of information sources are free. So probably the last slide is the most useful, Peter, in terms of that overarching perspective on the database. Uh, it's quite small in this slideshow, but the actual document that will sit on the website, you know, prints out as a full page um, PDF. That I think is super helpful because you can just run your eye down the various categories under those five themes uh, and then look across and then you'll, you won't be underwhelmed or overwhelmed. You know what you're going to expect when you go looking for knowledge about that part of implementing a transit activated corridor. So hopefully that short tour has been helpful. Uh, we're looking forward to feedback from users to see uh, where it's still falling short possibly because there hasn't been anything written about that context, possibly because people aren't sharing. If you have something to share, then please be in contact with the SBE so that we can update and keep this current for our industry colleagues as we crash through delivering transit activated corridors at scale, Peter. Very good. Well, that sounds very exciting and uh, certainly very practice-oriented uh, approach to how to deliver a uh, quality public transport system down a corridor and build around it to make a far better city and hopefully one that can begin the journey, the transition to the net zero qualities that we're working on in the next 18 months. But certainly uh, it will have all of those qualities of a really good urban project. So thank you very much. And uh, I love that presentation. Thank you. Thank you, Peter. And look, thank you for your mentoring through this project. I think we uncovered quite a few knowledge areas that we hadn't 
thought of explicitly as things that could help people on their journey in doing uh, the, the do side of uh, activated corridors. Lots of people talk about them being a good idea, but when you get down to it, there are a lot of twists and turns in that journey. So thank you and, uh, and Rob Adams and others in the SBE network who've been so critical in, uh, in showing us how to get really useful outcomes. And Savindi in particular from Griffith, who's just done a fabulous job in that heavy uh, engine work of collating all that information for us. Mm. Thank you very much. <laughs> <laughs>